Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And unfortunately, we're in draft season. And our first prospect on the board, left tackle from Penn State, Olu Fashanu. 6'6", 370, 17 pounds. Um, ready to get into this. Well, honestly, I'm not ready to get into it, but it is what it is. We got to get started at some point. And whether it's now or two weeks from now, I would have much rather it been two weeks from now, but... Let's just cut that off and, you know, get that out the way. It's time. So first up, Olu Fashando. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at him versus Ohio State and see how well he played versus Ohio State. And, you know, I'll give you my synopsis at the end. I picked about six plays I want to show you and talk about, and then I'll kind of give you the overview toward the back end. It's going to be kind of quick, probably about a five-minute video. And um, I'll talk about his second game on the Morse at the Tally channel. His second game will be versus Iowa. So if you want more from Olu Fashanu after this, go over to the second channel on Morse at the Tally, and I'll have his second game versus Iowa over there shortly. Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and let's get this draft content started. <laughs> Okay, let's get into Olu Fashanu's tape versus Ohio State. Now, when you look at anybody from Penn State, when you evaluate them, you want to go look at their Michigan tape and their Ohio State tape because that's going to be the toughest competition they face all year. So let's take a look at these plays. Now, I don't know how good 33 is, and I don't know how good uh, 91 is for Ohio State, but we'll talk about that on the back end. But this play right here kind of concerned me. Like, 33 doesn't really give him any kind of move. He just kind of stands there. And you see uh, Olu kind of cross over. And at no place should we have O-linemen crossing their feet. It should be more of a, a slide or more like a glide or like a kick. But you never, you never want them crossing over because most of the time, the defenders are going to be more athletic than them. 33 just stands there and just outruns them. So this kind of concerns me and brought up the initial thought that this guy is not as athletic as I thought like a top tackle prospect should be. Like he doesn't move as fluidly as I thought a top tackle prospect should be. This is the first red flag for me. Is it a big red flag? No, because most of the time tackles are going to work in space. But it just, just threw me off just a little bit. The second play. See him on the left side right there. It was the left tackle, so we're going to be on the left side anyway. This is great eye discipline. Great eye discipline and great recognition. Watch how fast his head snaps around when the defensive end plants his feet to bag up out of there. Slide, kick slide. And uh, I love the way his he don't have that huge leg kick when he's when he's uh pass sitting. His foot is like his his foot is not in the air alone. Bam, as soon as he plants. The bag of body there, look at his head snap around to see what's coming. And picks up 51 just in time. But I, I like the recognition. Like, he doesn't waste time. He doesn't, like, fall in love with the fact that, hey, I got this guy. As soon as he stuck his foot in the ground, he snapped his head around to see what else was coming. And then picked up 51. So I love the eye discipline. Great eye discipline to pick up the stunt, recognize the stunt, and, and help, the, help his uh, guard out. Not to fall in love with, okay, I got this guy. I got to block him. And when he obviously decided that, hey, I'm dropping, got his head around, picked up the next guy coming. Now, his guard, on the other hand, didn't. But we're talking about Olu here. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Still good eye discipline. Now on this one. like And, and Ohio State helps him out because this stunt is kind of raggedy in my eyes. So, and really, again, just a good job of not saying, hey, I got to block this guy with everything. Like, he don't fall in love with the fact I got to block this guy. I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay in my area. I'm going to block whoever shows up in my area. So they try a little twist. And again, Ohio State's twist right here is raggedy. And he goes from blocking the, the end to the three technique. And he just pass it off. Him and the guard just pass it off. There's no, there's no, I'm going to stay on this guy. I got to block this guy. They just pass it off seamlessly. A lot of trust there, a lot of instincts there. And again, once he got his hands on him, that was pretty much a wrap. Hands inside. Initially, the hand was outside, but got his hands inside and pretty much sealed it off. So I love the eye discipline. 
I love the fact that he doesn't just fall in love with, hey, I got to block this guy. He know he, he he's able to recognize space. Pick up the stunts because in the NFL, you're getting all kinds of stunts all day. The best defensive coordinators bring six to five different stunts. And you got to be able to pick them up. You can't just fall in love with a, I got this guy. Because you're going you're gonna to turn your shoulders the wrong way and then somebody's going to loop behind you and you go quarterback, go, your quarterback going to be on the ground. Now, this one, it's good and bad on this play. So let's start with, with the bad. Did he get beat on his spin move? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. 44 set him up real good. Started like he was going to go power. And, and look, like he's kicking wide, trying to trying not trying not to get beat by speed. Trying not to get beat by speed. So he kicked wide. The end sets him up like he's going inside. He sticks that foot in the ground and he tries to overcompensate by kicking back inside and then hitting with the spin move. Now, now to the good part. He realizes I'm beat. What can I do to help my quarterback not get hit? I just got to some kind of way run this guy past the quarterback. And at this point, he just takes the arm and just shoves the the defensive end past the quarterback. The quarterback has the wherewithal to kind of step up. But at that point, like, you know you beat. Don't give up on the play. Right here, I'm beat. Don't give up on the play. Do anything in my power to push this guy past the quarterback. And he does it without holding. That's the good part about it. He does this without holding. Quarterback recognizes, steps up. And now what the quarterback does at this point is kind of on him and the receivers. But the old lineman, despite... Despite losing initially, found a way to keep fighting and made lemonade out of lemons. And that's all you can ask out of the old line. Real impressive in my eyes. Real impressive in my eyes. The next play. Again, another another job of, of passing the guy off. But now we get to the point where I, like, I was expecting to see some mauling going on at some point. Like, He's a top and one of the top O-line prospects on a lot of people's uh, boards. And so I turned the tape on expecting to see a guy that was, you know, just finna beat up some people. Now, can he be a great lineman without beating up on people? He surely can. He's more of a technician. He's more of a technician. Uh, is this going to make him better in pass pro? Possibly. It's probably going to make him an overall better tackle. I just expected to see a guy when I turned on the tape, that would maul some people in, in the run game. I didn't see in the run game, I saw a guy that got in position and kind of stalemated. He, di- he didn't lose, but he didn't he didn't win loud, if that makes sense. He didn't lose, but he didn't win loud. Like this right here is a great job with his feet. He got great feet, though. He got great feet. Not great in space, but in, in the confines of the tackle boxes, got great feet. And then play six right here. And I love this. I love this on the backside. And let's talk about why I love it. So I know this is a tape about Olu, but we're going to talk about Olu and his tight end. So this is what I love. This is They're going to double team this guy and then work up to number 30. So we're cutting this backside out. I love the fact how the tight end gets in his hip and Olu feels that. And so he's going to push him off. And as the tight end takes over this block, he's just going to work his way over and cut that off. And I'm going to tell you why this is important. All right, you see him work up? And so now, tight end has this guy, Olu has this guy. For teams that run stretch, it is important to cut the defense in half, especially if you got a back that, that's going to hit it, stick his foot in the ground, and do that. Because if, if you cut this the defense in half, you split the defense, and you can get your back one-on-one with like the safety or maybe like a backside safety or something that's trying to cut it off, and he make that guy miss, that's where a lot of big runs come from. Because you got linebackers over here over-pursuing and you can get your back to stick his foot in the ground and go. Cutting the backside end off or the backside linebacker, or both in this case, is very, very important. And you have a guy that can do that. And the way they did this, this was extremely technical. And that's what he is. He's a technical blocker. He's not a mauler. And there's nothing wrong with being a technical blocker. Nothing wrong with at all. And that's probably why he's on the top of a bunch of people's boards. Now, I think this is my last one. It's my last play. So, these are the few little notes I had out beside of the plays. Um, looked average when I turned on the tape. Now, what I did see in pass pro, the negative, he got bull rush some in pass pro. Any other moves, 
He pretty much won them or found a way to 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 win late. Bull Rush, he got Bull Rush on when they just straight up said, hey, I'm going to run through you. In this game, he, he lost some of them. Or he just got pushed straight back to the quarterback. Um, I expected to see a different player, but that's probably my bias coming in. He does have long arms, has great feet, but to me, he just looked like an average prospect. But again, I don't know how good 33 is. I don't know how good 91 is. This is kind of part of – he gets a few strikes because this is the first guy I've done. So maybe you know I can revisit him later on after I've seen some other tackles. Maybe I've seen some other defensive ends so I can know how good 33 is and 91 is for uh, Ohio State. But I like I like what I see, even though it may sound like I don't. I like what I see out of him. I just need to see more of other guys to compare how good he is versus the other guys. So I will watch the second game. The second game will be the Iowa game. That game will be on the More Sip the Tally channel. So if you want to check that out, please go to the More Sip the Tally channel and check that out. I'll be doing that shortly. But I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And we definitely in the FTMF part of the um, season. Even though the Ravens season is over with and we did a lot of film there, this is strictly film. So film, then more film, and the more film will be on the More Sip the Talent channel over there. So go over there, subscribe if you're not, so you can get all this draft content, and we're going to have draft content here. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Peace and love, and I'll see y'all soon.